All right, out of breath. Intro, what's up guys? It's Will Ethan, I ran, going to max the 25K. That's it, field's tough, 20 big blinds in a dream. Last time I maxed 25K, I won. So shout out to uh, the people who bought action. I sold about 40%, just under 40% of this tournament. So I'm gonna go play it now. So I'm gonna stop this, go register, $25,000. Um, yeah, over 100 entrants. So definitely going to be a good amount of people, decent enough value big buy-in here in Bahamas. So hit that like button. Wish us luck. Taking my seat in this $25,000 tournament, I'm sandwiched in between Nick Petrangelo and Stephen Chidwick. Also on my table, I have Makita, Elio Fox, and Panat on my table as well. So let's just try to survive and have some fun here. And no better way to start off a tournament than picking up pocket kings in the cutoff. I opened things up to 12,000 here, and we're going to battle against the best right off the bat. Chidwick on the button calls, and Elio Fox calls in the big blind. So we're going three ways to a flop of Ace, Eight, Deuce, Rainbow. <sighs> Pocket Kings are just Ace Magnets, aren't they? Action's going to check around, luckily, so no round of betting here on this flop. Turn comes another Ace, which actually doesn't seem too bad. It's the Ace of Diamonds, brings in a backdoor flush draw, and once again, Action's going to check to Chidwick on the button here, and he sizes to a small bet of 9,000. Elio makes the call in the big blind, and I've got a pretty awkward spot to be in. On one hand, I think Kings, obviously very good hand. Playing very short stacked, I'm not going to go anywhere and I'm definitely not folding, but it's a decision between raising or calling here. I think a lot of the time my hand wants to call, but I will say sometimes it could raise. Anyways, we're going to see a river when I make the call and it is the deuce of hearts. The diamonds break out, double paired board, and pocket kings seems like a very strong hand on this board texture. Elio checks here, and now I think I feel like I have merit to block betting here. I could bet small for sure, and I decided to do that and get some value from smaller pocket pairs, or also 8x. I block bets of 14,000, about 20% of the pots, and this makes Stephen Chidwick go into the tank. Uses a full time bank and almost uses another time bank before announcing all in. Oh my god. God, no way. Elio folds here, and now what the hell do we do? On the surface here, I think it's just really hard for my opponent to be bluffing here with this line, right? Especially when there's another player behind who could easily have a full house like an ace. And I also unblock diamond draws. I, I don't know what to do here. It just seems like a very underbluff spot. Although Shidwick is a very solid and elite player, I don't think he can be bluffing it off here, but I do want to take my full time bank and just think about all the different options to go over. Like I said, it's hard to find bluffs, and the value consists of just the full houses, of course, as any ace is easily going to be all in. And end of the day, Chidwick's one of the best in the world. Can he even be bluffing in a spot like this? If he is bluffing, then kudos to him because I'm going to let the Kings fold. Maybe in hindsight, this was a little bit of a greedy line. I certainly could have just checked this river and called any bet that Chidwick would have thrown out there. Or maybe even Chidwick just gives up and checks this one back. But one way or another, I lose with Kings and I have 100,000 in my stack now. We're moving on where I'm in the big blind with Ace Queen off suits. There's a Kijak shove or about 10 big blinds. Obviously, Snap calling this one, and we see good news. We're up against Ace 10. Bad news, he flops a 10. Oh, man. RIP to me now. Two hands in. Snap, snap. I'm not out of the tournament yet, but I am having a hard time picking up chips, and I have a very, very short stack before I see Ace King. A premium. I have like six big blinds, and we see Nick under the gun open things up. Easy all in, of course. I don't need to talk about this. This is an easy all in here. And for my tournament life, action folds around to Nick and he shows pocket sixes and calls. He also says it's the best pocket pair versus ace king and proves him right with a six on the flop. The Nicky P psychology of poker, baby, calls his shots, flops his sets, and I'm dead in this tournament. GG's to $25,000. This was a rough one of losing three straight hands in a row. Hi, Varence. When you uh, when you max it, that is a, a GG's in the 25k. This this bullet was never meant for me. The king's hand uh, is tough, and then everything else is pretty standard. It was never meant for me. And we're moving on to the next tournament that I'll show you guys too, because I don't I don't actually know what the next tournament may be. I've got some stuff lined up. 
We've got a lot more tournaments to play, but GG's unfortunately to this one. Hey, brief little interruption in the video because I have to present to you guys a whole new cash game course presented by PokerCoaching.com. You guys know that I've been working with the site for the past year now and they are really instrumental in helping me understand the game a little bit better from the fundamentals and also some more advanced topics as well. From my perspective, having to switch from cash games and tournaments back and forth is really, really tough. So it's nice that this course will help refine some of the different nuances between the two different variations of poker. Anyways, for this course, it's only $29 at a one-time discounted rate for you guys, and they break it down into a cash game challenge. 13 days of very digestible content that you can consume whenever you want, and it's presented by Jay Wynn and Jonathan Jaffe, two very good players. So for just $29, you can get this course, a whole bunch of content for two full weeks, and at the end, they'll give you a quiz as well to see how much you've retained and how much information you've learned along the way. And lastly, it is a risk-free trial for you guys, essentially. If you guys feel like you haven't gotten any value in a 30 days from your purchase, you can email pokercoaching.com, ask for a full refund, but I'm sure you're not gonna do that because they always put out a great product. There's always going to be a lot of value to be learned. And at a discounted rate of $29, I literally actually can't believe that they're selling it for $29. I mean, they basically should just say it's free, uh, but hey, you know what? I'm not the guy creating the prices. I'm just sharing the information to you guys. So if you guys are interested in checking it out, link down in the description below. It's pokercoaching.com slash rampage pass for $29, AKA free. It's like what? 15 big blinds or a couple of big blinds if you're playing a cash game. So definitely worth checking out. Always have good content and let's get back to the video. Entering the $10,000 warm up here. We're in level 11 now and I have not many chips. About 14 big blinds and we see an all in. I have ace three offsuit in the big blind. Action folds to the small blind who goes all in. Easy snap call with any ace in my hand given these configurations and he shows eight seven of diamonds. It's a pure flip. First hand of my tournament life and you know the deal. I win this one, actually, surprisingly. I don't just auto bust tournaments. I gotta double up first before I feel the pain, but it's nice to win this here, up to 75,000 in chips, and we progress to level 13 where I still have 75,000 in chips. Not that impressive though, because it's less than 20 big blinds, and I'm in the big blind once again with sixes. There's a low jack open, small blind makes the call on a very, very short stack, and I think I have a very easy shove, especially when the small blind makes the call. Seems like a pretty easy decision. I'm all in for under 20 big blinds, easy squeeze spot, and bam, hello jack, snap, freaking calls, which is just never good news when you have a small pocket pair. Just feels like he has a premium. The small blind ends up tank calling as well, but not for a whole lot more. So we're going three ways, and we see we're up against kings and king six. Never love to see a six dead when I'm up against an overpair. How funny is it that king six is just drawing super slim, but not as bad as me. And yeah, we're not going to find that one outer. We're not going to find that one case six in the deck. And GG's to the 10K. Bad day. Bad start to this vlog. But overall, Bahamas, small sample, but over basically. I mean, I'm in cash the 3k. GG's to the uh, to this one. Don't love seeing a six dead versus an overpair, so couldn't find a one-outer. Unlucky, right? All right, minus 35k to start off this video. Hopefully no more pain to come, but that's probably gonna happen. Not really optimistic anymore, but hey, we're in Bahamas. I'm gonna go on that water slide again and do all that, so <sighs> that's all. All right, we've had a few bust outs so far, but today's the big day. 25k PSPC 1200 entrant tournament, $5 million for first place. Uh, it's five, six day long event. Uh, we're gonna register right now. So uh, convention center, going down the escalators and uh, 25K buy-in. I made a tweet that I will give out $1,000 to 25 different people if I final table this thing. For anyone that subscribes to the YouTube channel, you get a free roll potential of getting $1,000. So um, that's gonna be available. That's it. I don't know, it's gonna be a long tournament. Um, we're gonna start off with like 300 big blinds and we're just gonna see how it goes. So wish me some luck and uh, let's just get in there and uh, I don't know, hope for a really long day. Into the $25,000 PSPC main event. This is the one that matters with almost three to four million dollars in first place. And we see we're in level seven, played a whole lot of poker here up until this point. Nothing interesting, but we pick up pocket kings. Yeah. We're gonna spice things up now as I have 70,000 in my stack and we see there's an unmune raise to 2,500. Hooney, player on the button, three bets to 7,000. 
And the button started with about 55,000 in his stack. The under the end player had about 60,000 in the stack and I cover everyone. Let's get some more money in the middle. I four bet to 18,000. I'm gonna play one of the biggest pots of the night, hopefully, and we get some action as the onion player ends up folding, but the button makes the call in position. We're going to hopefully try to fade an ace on this flop and get it in. The flop comes 3-3 three, three, deuce rainbow. Driest flop ever. The most perfect board I could ask for with pocket kings. And we're gonna down bet to 8,000. I do this with my entire range here because it should be pretty condensed and pretty narrow. And for 8,000, my opponent makes the call. All right, we've got action. Looks like he has a pocket pair and the turn comes a deuce. Double paired board, doesn't matter at all. And I am going to go all in here, covering my opponent and he snap calls. This could be really good or really bad and he's showing aces. This ended up being really bad. Disaster situation running kings into aces here to the first significant hand of my tournament life. No king on the river and my 70,000 chip stack dwindles to 15,000. And all I have to say after this hand is that I feel so, so much pain. This was one of the most anticipated tournaments of the entire year and basically kissing my hopes and dreams goodbye here, unfortunately. I do have 10 big blinds, give or take with 15,000, but not looking too hot and we're in level eight now. Blinds have increased and I've got 10 big blinds, 12K in my stack and I look down at ace, seven offsuit in the cutoff. We're gonna have to send this one in here. I'm all in when action folds to me and the big blind makes the call quickly. This cannot be a good sign, and I see we're up against pocket tens. All right, gotta find an ace somewhere in this deck, and it is nowhere to be found. No ace, only pain. Pocket tens wins, and that's my journey in this massive tournament. Six day events. I couldn't even make it to day two. GG's, I'm out. This one feels especially bad. Been getting showered all uh, Bahamas trip long, but. This one, this one hurts more because this was like the, the tournament, you know? This one is the tournament, just snap left. This one doesn't feel good. Gonna have to sulk after this one. And, um, there's something else to fire, I'm sure, but this was a very, very expensive video. 25K down, 10K down, another 25K down. Maybe next year for this trophy, maybe next year. <sighs> On to tomorrow, right? It's just another tournament. All right, today is a new day, which means that the sun's out, there's a lot of hope, and a new tournament to play, mainly just hopeful that maybe things can go well for me this trip. Uh, I think I've torched like $60,000 so far in this video, two 25Ks, one 10K, and how fitting would it be that I go and cash today's tournament, which is a 3K buy-in. By far the smallest, one of the smallest tournaments I'll play this trip, but it's gonna be a fun one. It's a really good structure, good everything, good buy-in price points, so um, it's gonna be a big one. So I'll include any highlights, hopefully no bust outs, but it is a single re-entry, so I can't lose everything. Can't lose it all <laughs> uh, in this tournament. So let's just hop in there and uh, register because it's gonna be another fun day of tournament poker because that's how tournaments go. They're fun. It's a new dawn, a new day, new life in a $3,300 buy-in, and I pick up aces to start off this tournament. Gotta love that. There's a plus one open to 2,700, and I'm going to three bet on the larger side. I've been pretty aggressive so far this tournament so far, and I'm gonna pick up a premium and hopefully win chips. I three bet to 8,300. My opponent decides to go all in. The four bet shoves with 40,000 chips, almost a starting stack, snap call, and I'm up against pocket tens. Let's go. List one's gonna be the one. Obviously, he's starting off very, very nice, and I have piles when aces ends up holding. Gotta love it. Chip stack is well over 100,000 chips, which is about 2x starting. And here we go. Level 11 comes after late reg ends, and it's announced over $1 million in the prize pool. And we're going to keep battling and hoping to crawl out of the big hole I've dug myself in. I have ace three of hearts and plus one. I raise it up to 3,500, and I get the cutoff to three bet to 9,000. Action folds to me, early position versus late position three bets. About 40 big blinds, suited wheel aces are a pretty good candidate to four bet shove. I'm going to be four bet shoving a lot of really good hands and having a suited wheel ace definitely qualifies as a bad hand to do it with. So trying to balance things out, I go all in and he snap calls. Sadly, my opponent was not three betting light because he shows pocket kings. Well, 
Sometimes you run into it, and sometimes he flops top set as well. Basically drawing dead, I lose. That's very unfortunate. My hard-earned chips goes to the wrong direction. No suck out with the ace here, and we're gonna have to crawl back with my very short stack. Next hand, ace queen off suit. This time, it's actually a good hand. There's an under gun raise, and I have 20 big blinds in a dream next to act. Ship it in there, send it in there, I'm all in. Everyone folds around to the ungun player, he shows pocket jacks. This is a better situation than with the ace three, but we're gonna be flipping and lose that flip. And just like that, I'm out. I double with aces, and then a few levels later, I lose with the ace three, then I lose a flip, and GG's 3300 tournament. You were a lot of fun while it lasted. And another wonderful, wonderful, Wonderful fucking night. Fuck, man, every fucking time. Tomorrow's a 25K. I don't know when I'm gonna reg it. I don't know what <laughs> how long this video is going to be, but another bust. Another bust. Another freaking bust. Jesus Christ. We're on to tomorrow. Tomorrow, I guess, matters more. 25K. All right, fellas, we're back. It's the next day. It's uh, about 10 p.m. I'm going to late reg the 25K. It's a single re-entry. And the plan is to play tonight, hopefully spin, because this is basically the last big tournament of the trip. There's a couple 1Ks to end it off, but this is obviously 25 times bigger than a 1K. I sold a little bit of action on staking, so shout out to people who bots. I'm gonna hop in there with about 50 big blinds, and that's it. Let's, it's been a bloody, bloody trip, bloody video. Hopefully you guys enjoy the highlights of the pain, because sometimes I don't always sun run, and it happens. And um, let's just keep trying to play as well as I can, and please, this time, one time, this time, this time, this 25k. Let's let's try to bank. Firing into the next 25k with 50,000 starting stack. I pick up Ace King offsuit on the button. Good premium hand to play for starting things off. And there's an only gonna open to 2,200. Then there's a low jack three bet to 6,000. And both players have smaller stacks than me. They're sitting with about 30 to 40 big blinds effective. And I could certainly four bet small to something like 15,000. But these tournaments are pretty high variance. And I'm just going to lean into it. Also, the first hand of every bullet has gone so well so far. So I just shove. I'm all in and we get called. Action folds around to Lojack, and he ends up making the call with pocket jacks. We're off to a flip. These flips have served me really well in the beginning. This one's a big one for a 25k buy-in and lose. <sighs> this one didn't work out. Now I'm down to 8,000 chips after paying my opponent. That's good enough for eight big blinds. With eight big blinds, I pick up eight, seven offsuit under the gun. This is uh, this is a fold. So now, time to take on the big blind now, next position, where I'll have six big blinds and a dream. In this next shuffle, we see I have jack three offsuit. There's an early position open. Two players make the call over to me, and this hand sucks. But I gotta take a spot somehow. I've got to gamble and hope for the best here. So jack three off suit with just one big blind more to call. How can I ever fold? I'm in here. The flop comes king jack four. Overall, not a bad flop with middle pair. I can't really ask for much more. So multi-way, I think I'm incentivized to try and win this somehow. And that's going to be committing my stack in there. I decided to lead shove. I need to avoid a lot of landmines to win this pot, but... Well, one of the players ends up making the call. He has pocket fours, my own hand betraying me. Bottom set is going to be a tough one to crack with just middle pair, and I'm dead. GG's. So here we are, losing the first bullet of the 25k. The total is starting to add up. Just can't fucking win. Gonna max this tomorrow. Just can't win this trip, I guess. Not possible. All right, this is it. This is it. This is, this is what the trip comes down to. It's the last event of the tournament of the of the series of Bahamas. Last try at a 25k this week, this video. I'm uh, going to be maxing with 33 big blinds. Sold action again on State King, so the people who bought action. Good luck us. One flip is really good for morale. That's really all I want. That's all I need. Just one flip. Field's going to be relatively tough. Uh, it's going to be a really big prize pool though. Probably 4 million in the, in the prize pool. So just under 1 million for first place again. <sighs> One time. All right, it's been it's been a it's been a really bad trip. All right, let's get in there. Wish us luck. I don't know how many times I have to go over this intro. There's probably more intro talking 
than uh, than actual poker playing because I bust so fast. So uh, let's see, let's find out. We are max late regging the 25k now in day two with 33 big blinds and a dream. I pick up ace queen offsuit in the big blind. Action folds to Alexis Ponikovs, very very elite player, and he ends up raising the small blind to 5,000. Now, at this point, I have about 30 big blinds, and I think my hand just wants to shove. Like I said before, I'm happy to lean on the side of variance, since I don't think I'm better than this opponent, and I don't want to play post-flop with literally one of the best players. So I'm all in with a very good hand. And my opponent snap calls with ace, king of spades. Oh my god, until a queen high flop. No way. Somehow I find one of the three outers against ace, king. I end up holding. And I double up against one of the best. Like I said, I can't outplay the guy. So why not just outflop him? And the very next deal after that, I pick up Ace King suited. Is this the start of a sun run here? I'm in the small blind and there's a plus one open to 3,500 off of a 50,000 starting stack. Action folds to me. I have about 60 big blinds and the big blind covers me, so I want to be a little bit more cautious than going all in, especially with a strong hand like this. I threw it to 15,000 now and when the big blind ends up folding, plus one player takes his time before announcing an all in. I'm in here, I make the call and we see we're up against pocket jacks, another flip situation against jacks, ace king, win one time, brick. Brick, brick city. Oh, so unfortunate. What a roller coaster of the last two hands. I was so, so close to having piles. I literally could have had 130,000 to start the day, but now I'm back to 30,000 myself. Time to rebuild where I pick up ace 10 offsuit. The blinds have increased, and I'm in the low jack. With about 13 big blinds, this is a good enough hand to shove, I guess. Can't really play post swap on 13 bigs. I'm all in. Action folds to the small blind who ends up making the call. So we've got some action and we see we're up against pocket nines. Another classic flip situation and I flop a 10. Woo! Swingy, swingy, swingy all in. It's win one, lose one, win one. It's kind of like how flips go. Who's surprised? And here I have 55,000. So right back to starting stack with about 77 players left. 27 players are in the money. I have definitely played longer than I expected, to be quite honest with you. Didn't expect to make it to the end of break, so uh, or to break. Two hours of play has, has come coming on. It's been real swingy. My table is absolutely ridiculous. Everyone's very good. What am I doing here? I don't know. The, the rest of the tables don't look that great either. Very, very tough field, <laughs> but I'm alive. Just to win all ins, right? So. I'm gonna plan to try to win more all-ins. This is like day five of the uh, PSPC right now, 25K tournament. So a lot of cameras, a lot of production. Anyways, I'm gonna go to break and hopefully try to spin up the 20 big blinds that I have coming back after. Good luck us. Coming back from break, I look down at a premium, Pocket Kings in early position. I raise things up to 5,000 and, well, we've got action because the button three bets to 13.5K. Oh baby, the heart is pumping here for sure. Action folds to me and all I know is that I'm gonna be all in here at my specific stack depth. I'm just going to be jamming a lot of hands and of course, Pocket Kings is going to qualify. I just hope that my opponent has a hand good enough to call. So I'm all in, my opponent snap calls. He has ace, king and let's fade the ace one time please. No ace on the board. Let's go. Thank you, dealer. And just like that, we're up to 100,000 chips. 2x starting. All we needed was to win a couple all-ins, and we're back from the dead. Now, two hands later, I'm in the big blind now with king, queen of spades. Same opponent in the low jack that I just doubled through opens it up to 5,000. A very, very elite pro. And here, I'm going to make the call, of course. Nothing else to do with king, queen suited. And we're going to a flop of queen, eight, seven, rainbow. I check on a great, great flop for me. And my opponent sizes to 9,000. Sizing a little bit larger here. So when he sizes bigger, I want to check raise less. And for that reason, king, queen suited, I can go in between with the call or check raise. In this specific instance, I decided on a call. Now we're going to a turn, which is the three of hearts, brings in a backdoor flush draw and here a pretty safe card overall for me. I checked to my opponent once again, and he now blasts 22.5 thousand into the middle. 
another very large sizing and I take my time here, my full 30 seconds to go over all of my options. I could potentially check raise, but when I look at my stack, it doesn't seem like there's any sizing besides all in that would do the trick. And the issue with going all in is that I don't really think I can get called by worse and all of his bluffs would obviously fold out. So I'm going to set the trap and let my opponent to continue blasting. I make the call. Now we're going to the river, which comes in offsuit three, as brick of a card as I could ever ask for. And I have such a strong hand, one of the best hands I'll ever have on this board. I check to my opponent one more time, and my opponent announces all in. He's going for it, the triple barrel. Does he have an overpair or ace queen, or does he have complete air? I count my stack, it's about 63,000 total, and I am just never going to be folding. I make the call for my tournament life here, and he shows 6-5 of clubs. Another freaking double up. Let's go. I have almost 200,000 now, and we have life. Thank goodness I didn't check raise on the flop or turn, because that allowed my opponent to triple barrel off with 6 high and a dream. And yeah, just like that, we are back. From 30,000 chips, we have almost 7 exit to 200,000. We're cooking here. A couple orbits later, I pick up Jack-9 off suit. Once again, we're up against the same opponent in the low jack. He raises to 5,000, and I have a very easy, defendable hand here. So we're going to a flop of Queen-Jack-6 to hearts. I check into my opponent, and once again, he sizes for a larger sizing of 9,000. All right, with middle pair, can't go anywhere. Of course, I'm in here to make the call, and we're going to see a turn, which is the deuce of diamonds. I check once again to my opponent, and this time he once again sizes up to 17,000. Obviously, when there's good players on the table, they're going to be playing their hands really well. They're going to have a lot of value, a lot of bluffs, and here with middle pair, I'm feeling a little bit indifferent about what I want to do. A calling makes a whole lot of sense because I have a pair and I beat all of his bluffs. Folding also makes a lot of sense because I lose to a lot of the value that my opponent can have. And I just feel like I'm in a pretty tricky spot. And when I think it's close, I'm happy to battle and call one more street. So I toss in 17,000 and we're off to a river, which is these 10 of hearts. Not a good board for me to see. Very bad river card. Flush gets there. Two pair combos get there. I don't beat a whole lot of hands, so I check, praying to see showdown, but it does not come. My opponent decides to go all in for about 40,000, and I've got a pretty easy decision, which is a fold here. Results-wise, I guess I'm a little bit upset that I didn't fold the turn because I don't have many outs left if to win this hand anyways. But here we are. We lose a few chips to that opponent. At least he deserved some sort of a rebate after the two big ones we won against him. Progressing to level 14 now, and we're in a tricky spot with King Queen of Spades on the button. Action folds to the cutoff player who goes all in for 45,000, about 15 big blinds. And well, I think I have a pretty easy continue here, but it's tricky because I don't know if I want to raise or call. It's tricky because I have two of the most elite aggressive regs behind. I have Chad Evslodge in the small blind and then no other than Michael Adamo in the big blind. So I think about it and I decided on just a call. We're going to be a little bit passive here. I don't know what to do. I don't really want to commit my entire stack, but the small blind ends up folding and now Adamo doesn't snap fold. If you don't know who Michael Adamo is, look him up. He's known for being hyper aggressive and super aggro. And uh, he asks how much I have left behind, which is a little nerve wracking. I have about 110,000 chips behind. I'm just praying he folds and luckily he does. He did have to give me a little bit of a sweat though. So when Adamo folds, we see we're up against King Queen off suit. So we've got a free roll situation going on. Can I see spades? The flop? Two spades. Oh my God. Let me free roll this so hard. Turn spade. GG's to Aram here, whom I stacked. Very unlucky situation for him, but I'll take the chips. I'm back up to 200,000 now after that last hand with Jack-9. We go through a string of being a little bit card dead where I have about 150,000 chips, 38 players left, and 11 need to bust until we're in the money. Hey, guess what? Just wrapped up dinner break. Gonna head there and play now. 35, 36 players left. I have 25 bigs, give or take. And it's gonna be a sweat. We are eight or nine off of the money with 25 big blinds. This might take a while. I'm gonna need to, to chip up, pick my spots somehow. Wish me luck. Wish everyone luck that uh, bought action. It's gonna be a sweat.
After dinner break, it's still a sweat. 33 players left. I'm car dead with about 20 big blinds. And with under 100,000 chips in my stack of folding around, we arrive at this spot with ace queen offsuit. I can do one of two things. I can open call off or I can just shove all in myself. And uh, well, I decided on the all in option myself. There's a little bit of recording complications because the floor was yelling at me to stop. But big thanks to Andrew who helped hold out my phone and recorded the second half of this video. We see when I'm all in action folds around to Brock Wilson in the big blind snap calls with ace king. Oh no, he has ace king suited with ace queen once again. Let's go to a run out. No freaking way, the 10 on the river saves me! Holy crap, I literally thought I was drawing dead on the turn when I saw that king. Little did I know, I actually picked up more outs, from three outs to a queen to four outs to a 10. That saves me, holy crap. Who would have actually thought that this would have worked out? I, I guess I'm saved. Now that I have a really good chance of making it in the money after this disgusting suck out, Brock has plenty of chips, he can't be happy about it, but Thank you, Brock, for the chips and the donation with Ace King. With 28 players left, we are now hand for hand on the stone bubble of this tournament. This next clip you're going to see are forced all-ins. A player with only a 4,000 stack is forced all-in on his big blind, and he ends up doubling. So unfortunate hitting a straight. And then the next clip, same opponent goes all-in. King-6 versus Ace-King to double up again after another forced all-in. This has been a very long and painful bubble, but this third clip you're going to see, finally, Queen Jack wins against another forced all-in of 9-8 suited. And after a pretty long bubble that took over well over an hour, we are in the money with 230,000. Not a whole lot of chips, but plenty of enough life to play for. You're going to see a new angle here because I have to use a tripod to record my videos now. But we see a big all-in with 17 players left in this tournament. We progressed. A lot of short stacks busted. Really big all-in of King-Queen versus Pocket Jacks. And King-Queen ends up winning the flip, which is a really, really significant pot. And the Pocket Jacks player is left with a very, very short stack before arriving to the last hand of the night that I actually get involved in. We're playing about six-handed, seven-handed, and I have King-10 of hearts in the low jack. I raise it up to 24,000 and my friend Anthony decides to call in the big blind. We're off to a flop of king, queen, 10, two spades. Very sick flop for me with two pair. I decide to C bet 28,000 and my opponent snap folds. He shows the camera the seven, four of diamonds. All right, I'm going to win this one here and end up bagging 265,000 chips with 17 players left. We are on to day three of this tournament where we're going to play down to a winner. All right, it's 2 a.m. and getting, getting the fuck out of here. We just bagged up 17 players left in the tournament. I will have under 20 big blinds, but hey, that's fine. That's plenty. All that matters is I have life in this thing somehow in the very last big tournament of of this trip, so maybe it could be a trip saver. And um, yeah, I'll be, it's 2 a.m., it's really late. Restarts in 10 hours, so uh, let's just do that. I'm gonna go to bed. It, it was a very, very long day, so I'll see you guys in the 10 and a half hours. I don't know if I'm gonna make this a two-parter or what, but let's just run good tomorrow. Good luck me, good luck everyone who bought action. Let's get it. All right, there are very, very few days in which I would love to ask for the poker gods to grant me the sun run. And guess what? The sun's out right now. There's a chance. Day three coming in, starting up in a few minutes. I have about, there There are 17 players left. I am in about 13th or 14th in chips. So near the bottom of the path, but certainly still alive. It's definitely still in it, which is great. I'm gonna have like 18 big blinds to start the day, start off, starting off the day in the big blind. So gonna lose some chips right off the bat or hopefully win a big one if I get Delta Monster. Big day, so let's just get into it. Play starts uh, in like a couple minutes, and, and let's, just, uh, let's just run good, right? The start of day three starts off here where I'm 14th in chips, and we see the first elimination of the day. Pocket Queens ends up beating Pocket Nines, and there are all of a sudden 16 players left. 16 players left means there's a redraw to the final two tables. We've made it in here, and here we are sweating out the next hand, aces versus pocket threes. 
There are now 15 players left. We've locked up a pay jump and have $76,000 locked up here in this tournament. And we're going to bring back the action to me where I need to chip up desperately. You'll see that I had ace nine offsuit on the button. I shove and everyone folds. Then the very next deal, I pick up ace five suited. I open shove one more time. The next three players end up folding and I get a little bit of chips picking up here from back to back shoves. So I went from 155,000 to over 200,000. And now we see another all in. Brock is actually all in for his tournament life. Pocket Kings up against Ace 10 off suits, and the favorite wins. Who's surprised? Brock runs pretty good. His Kings are going to hold. We don't see an Ace, and he doubles up. I'm trying to record as many all ins as possible here. So we see Pocket Nines beating Pocket Sixes. 13 players left, and 13 means another pay jump of $88,000 locked up. So we just won $12,000 essentially by folding and being card dead. And now it's our turn to be all in here. I'm on the button with 11 big blinds and look down at king queen off suit. Two Broadway cards. It's certainly going to be good enough to shove, hoping, hoping, and praying that. Honestly, everyone just ends up folding. I announce all in. Brock reshoves his ace jack off suits. We've got two live cards. Come on, Brock. Let me suck out on you another time. Flop is ace queen high. We both hit a piece of that flop. And unfortunately, that pair of aces is going to hold. And GG's to me. I am dead in 13th place for a cash out of $88,000 total. that he gets my chips after I sucked out on big time on the bubble with the ace queen versus ace king and uh, yeah he gets me here with the king queen versus ace jack so um yeah unfortunately no big spots today in day three guess that's just how poker goes it goes to, uh, that's just how card distribution goes I got a few shoves through tried to survive as much as possible I did end up laddering twice which is not so bad. Um, yeah, I came in locked up like 60,000 and now we're out with 88,000. So uh, big shout out to everyone who bought on State Kings. Happy you guys bought the second bullets. And happy to return some sort of a return and profit for you guys. As for me personally, this was a rough trip, but this is the last hope. I think it's gonna be the last video of this Bahamas trip. It's my last day here anyways. Uh, overall, I just ran the numbers of myself. I lost a little bit, uh, including all the tournaments, including uh, selling action, this and that. So unprofitable trip here, a lot of big buy-ins, and uh, this is just the beginning of the year. So looking forward to more tournaments, looking forward to sharing you guys the experience along the way throughout this trip, and I'm going to Paris next. So I'm really excited about that. More tournaments to come, more videos to come. Thanks for the sweat. If you made it all the way to the end, I don't even know how long this video would be, but hit that like button. A lot of pain and very, very close to a lot of glory, but maybe next time. Thanks for watching. Peace.